Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money and the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three, what did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your own. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on? Um, I just wanted to come in and say hello. Uh, there is a brother that uh, I was, I was going to meet um, uh, online and uh, bring him on the air. And uh, hopefully he'll pop in. His name's Kyren, and uh, his son is super smart. And uh, I was so impressed with uh, what I saw when his son did a video, a really impressive video um, on, um, on wealth and investing. And I was super uh, just, just inspired by what I saw. So uh, the brother hit me up or I hit him up or one of us hit each other up, I don't remember. And, uh, he, um, and we just came up with the idea of him coming into the podcast so we could talk a little bit. So uh, I'm going to bring him into this Instagram live at some point uh, until... Um, uh, and, and so until the, he arrives, uh, and hopefully when he arrives, he'll let us know he's here. Uh, how about that election? Wasn't that something else? Uh, it was very interesting to watch. Um, I will say this. Uh, how do I feel? A lot of people are asking, how do I feel about the election? Um, I, I don't feel anything. I kind of feel like it's, um, you know, that's like an election. It's, it's fun. Elections are fun to talk about, but they don't make a difference in the lives of black people. Like, so... If you look at, um, and history is your guide, right? So you go back to Democratic administrations, Republican administrations, any administration, it really just kind of comes down to what you choose to do. Like, you know, like when you talk about things like a black agenda, and um, and I just had a talk with a friend about the black agenda not too long ago, and it's like the black agenda is something that can be implemented by black people. It can be implemented in your house. What is the black agenda for your kids? Like, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a little older than some of you, a little younger than some of you. I'm not sure which one. But in the 1980s, the 1980s was a terrible time for black people. Uh, you know, you had Ronald Reagan in the White House. Uh, Ronald Reagan, you don't talk about real racist. You know, Reagan was much, much ra more racist than any of the politicians today. Um, I mean, he was a pretty, uh, pretty terrible guy in a lot of ways when it came to black people. But, you know, our family actually improved. We actually prospered during the Reagan era. And it wasn't um, it wasn't a matter of like Reaganomics being good for our family. Uh, my dad was a cop. My mother was a social worker. It was really just a matter of us just handling our business, and that's just what it was. So you know, I'm just telling you honestly, God, truth. The number one thing that's going to make a difference in the lives of Black people will be choices that Black people make, right? So the question is, what choices are you going to make? Uh, the election is entertainment. It's like talking about you know, it's like talking about the Super Bowl. You know, we all get emotionally tied up into whether or not our team wins or doesn't win, but it doesn't matter, um, you know, who wins at the end of the day. Now, by the way, with the teeth thing, I'm, I'm doing six months of this dental procedure. They're literally opening up my mouth. So that's why it just seems kind of like I'm, I'm sort of, uh, you know, kind of talking a little bit funny. And, uh, and this is not done. I'm not done completely. I'm going to have actually have a more like implants kind of positioned in and stuff like that. And that's why it's not, it's not easy to talk. It feels like I have something in my mouth all the time. I probably sound like I do, but you know, I'm just trying to be healthy. Now, the bright side of the teeth thing is that I have lost 16 pounds. Like today was actually five days ago. It's the first time in probably 10 years, 15 years that I was below 210 pounds. I hit 209.4 and I stayed there. And then two days later, three days later, um, I dropped to 207. So now I'm at 207 something. So now I'm on the road to 199. So I'm actually really excited because I feel really good. Um, I, I didn't know I'm like my face slimmed out. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's just great. My stomach is flatter. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So, so there we go. So anyway, so that's what's going on. That's why, that's why I don't sound exactly the way I normally sound. Eventually it'll go back to normal, but right now they literally are opening up my entire bite. So it's kind of, it's kind of some crazy shit, but that's what it is. So, you know, and I, I'm okay talking about it because I, I think black men in general, all of us need to think about our health. 
Um, a lot of us don't think about our health enough, and that's why black men die. That's why a lot of us die so early, you know, whether it's obesity or high blood pressure, you know, stuff like that. So you got to deal with that shit. You know, it's not fun, but, you know, you got to change your lifestyle if you want to change your life. So let me see here. You can see it in your face. Yeah, yeah, my face, like I even I see it a little bit, you know, like my face is slimmer and stuff like that. So I actually kind of enjoy it. Uh, let me see. Keep shining, Dr. Boyce. Thank you. Uh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, markets are fine with Joe Biden presidency as long as Republicans keep the Senate. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, when Biden, see, when you know, it's the, the market already priced in a Biden win. They didn't, but the, what they didn't factor in was a close election. They, they they did factor in a contested election, but not a close election, right? So they thought that Trump was going to fight because Trump has been fighting his whole life. That's, he's just a fighting type of person. Uh, but the fact that the election was so close kind of got to the point where it's like, well, who's going to be the president? And so with Biden in office, the big uh, thought there at that point was a blue wave. And so everybody thought that the Democrats were going to possibly take not just the presidency, but also the Senate. That's big. If they had taken the presidency and the Senate and kept the House, then you would have seen all this legislation pass through. Definitely higher taxes, uh, definitely antitrust, um, you know, antitrust operations against the big tech companies, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix and Google. They call them the FANG stocks. Um, but none of that's going to happen, you know, because the uh, the Senate's going to stay in control of the Republicans, which will create like more of a balance. So Biden can't just sort of run through and get things done the way he wants. Now, here's what's, here's what's really funny, right? Uh, I'm looking for the brother who's supposed to uh, come in. I'm, I'm interviewing him today. I don't see him in here, but it's okay. We'll, we'll just keep talking till I see him. And if you're in here, brother, just uh, keep letting me know that you're here because I, I can't I can't find you. But um, but the other piece of that is um, you know, so that's why you saw the market go up today. Is because um, there's more uncertainty about the election. A, a, a contested election, which you're probably going to get, is is going to reduce stock prices. But that was counterbalanced against the fact that there was no blue wave, and also um, what's the other thing? No higher taxes due to a blue wave. So the, because the blue wave wouldn't just mean higher taxes; it would mean like more regulation and you know all kinds of other stuff that might complicate things a little bit. Um, so chances of Biden kind of getting his agenda just passed straight through will be tough. Now, what's really sad to me is that if I'm not mistaken, I got to double check, but I believe that Obama actually had a blue wave. Like he actually had all the houses of government, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody tell me if I'm right or wrong on that. I got to go triple check that. But, um, but you know, he had all that, right? So if you wanted to get, say, a reparations bill pushed through, um, I can't imagine a better time to do it. And if they if they control all the branches of government and they still can't get black people through, then that doesn't give me a lot of hope, you know, for the government uh, process. <clears throat> Malcolm X brought that up. Malcolm X actually talked about that. He said if they control all the branches of government and they still have nothing for black people, then what what hope do you have in these people? Um, so anyway, if you if you are a Biden supporter, then I'm not mad at you. I'm I'm happy for you. I'm not a Biden supporter. I'm not a Trump supporter. I voted. You know, I voted for. I voted for. Um, the libertarian candidate this is white lady named joe jorgensen and i researched her and she's smart and she seemed like somebody who um wasn't caught up in all the uh corporatization of <clears throat> of government but the corporatization isn't really even biden's fault or trump's fault honestly it's just the system i mean these corporations have billions of dollars <clears throat> on the line based on which laws get passed so they raised 14 billion dollars for all these elections to happen 6.5 billion for the presidency, 7.5 billion for uh, for the other, you know, for the congressional races. Well, why would they do that? Well, they do that because if they get their guy in office, the first thing their guy's going to do is take care of them. And but the thing is, they need votes. So all this money, a lot of it goes toward marketing. It goes to getting you and I to identify with the candidate and to support the candidate. But the problem is, the bad incentive is that. The uh, candidate has no incentive to do anything for the voters. The candidate's incentive is to do things for the people that help him buy the voters. So you're in the process, but you're a commodity in the process. The big, the big, um, the it's almost like, uh, you know, no different from like, you know, two men passing around a hooker or something like seriously, like she's there, but she's the commodity. She's not she has no equity in the process. Right. So basically they pass you. They pass this around like like the way you pass around a hooker and the government is passing 
uh, the voters, you know, around to each other or to the, co the corporations or whatever, and the corporations are the ones that actually win. So one of the reasons I think that the black agenda should include consistent stock market investing for black people is because that's one of your key avenues to break out of the limitations of capitalism. You know, there's no law. It'd be different if we lived in a country that said only rich people can buy stock or only white people can buy stock in companies. Anybody can buy stock in a company. Like you can actually go buy shares of, of a company right now on Cash App, you know, for as little as $5 and then build up from there. And why is that important? Well, because if you consistently put your money into the um, into the stock market, then when these companies are making money from, you know, from government policy, you're making money too, right? So if, if they're making money and you're making money, then you don't care. That's one of the reasons why I believe Amazon is going to be the next company to split its stock. I'd be stunned if Amazon doesn't do a stock split in 2021. When Amazon does a stock split, its price is probably going to go higher. And I believe they're going to do a stock split in response to um, antitrust pressure that they that they're receiving. I, because because splitting your stock is a populist kind of thing. Like when Apple split its stock, a lot of people could afford to buy you know complete shares who couldn't afford them before. So the the thing that makes people mad at you is when you're doing doing well is not a problem. But when you're doing well and you're excluding people, then that's a problem, right? If you're blocking people from opportunity. Um, but if, if people have an opportunity to be connected, like, you know, then they're not as likely going to get mad at you. It's kind of like um, if you're a dope dealer and you, you're doing you're making big money and all your homeboys are struggling and you don't help your homeboys eat, then they're going to come kill you. Right. Because what incentive do they have to keep you alive? So you have to think about all the people around you. So basically these um, big corporations, these tech companies that have all this money, they're they're the kingpins. They're the ones that have all the wealth. And they got to share the wealth. They got to find avenues to include the masses in the process so that when Apple stock goes up, millions of people are happy. Millions of people are like, yeah, I made money today. Then they're not going to look at Apple and say, wait, you made money, but I got nothing. Right? That's not that's not cool. Right. So uh, can you explain why you believe it doesn't matter who the president is? Um, because it ha it's never really mattered much for black people. Uh, all through the last 50 years since um, they, they pulled this nonsense on us with the civil rights movement uh, and got us to really buy into the aspect of integration, our wealth has actually gone down. You know, if you're making progress, your wealth should, should be going up. Uh, our kids are less educated. If you're making progress, then your children should be getting better educations. Uh, more black men went to prison. Uh, if, if you're making progress, then you shouldn't be your, your fathers and husbands should not be going to prison. I know a lot of us are used to that. That's how we grew up. That's what we saw. We think that's normal. That shit ain't normal. That's 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 you. You've normalized incredibly abnormal situations like you've normalized the Holocaust. You know that that's a Holocaust. That's like what the Jews went through in World War Two. You just don't see it that way because you, you've been taught to believe in this American exceptionalism, which it just isn't real. It's not true. So um, the, the reason I don't think it matters is because if you go back and you look at every administration, Democrat or Republican, there's not a big difference in terms of how much progress black people make in either one of those administrations. So uh, when you look at the data, when you just look at reality, like what is it that causes black people to do well? Well, it's, it's individual choices. It's, it's choices and behavior. Where it really, the more integrated you are into whiteness, the less successful you're likely going to be um, you, because you, you're go, you may think you're educated, but you're going to be miseducated. You're going to be educated to be a white supremacist. And then when you become a white supremacist, you're in the unenviable, almost uh, intolerable, really horrific position of, of buying into a system where you, that's designed for you to lose. Right. The, the best way for me to become successful, like I'm a quote unquote successful black man. Right. Um, I made a little bit of money. I know a few things. I, I've been able to impact quite a few people around the world. Um, but it wasn't until I disconnected from the system and stopped believing in the system and started really questioning the system and started saying, well, what the fuck is in it for me? What's in it for me? It wasn't until I started doing that that I actually truly became successful because it's almost like you're driving on the freeway and they're saying everybody needs to take this road. Everybody needs to stay on this highway. You cannot drive off this highway. There's nothing off this highway, right? So you're driving, but there's traffic. Like you're sitting there and you can't even move and you know you wanna go far, far down the road, but every car is blocking you. And then you just say, you know what? Fuck it, I'm getting off at this exit ramp, right? And you get off on the exit ramp and you drive, or, you know, through some side streets. Maybe you even drive through some woods and over, you know, over some grass or whatever. And next thing you know, you've passed up, you know, 20,000 cars, right? And and that's how my life went. I, I just said, fuck it, I'm getting off the highway. I'm getting off on the exit ramp. And whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be better than this because I know what this is. I, I know this. I know this system very well. 
And this system ain't really got nothing for the black man. It ain't got nothing for the black man. Um, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I hope it, I hope it's okay if I, if I mention it, but like, I, 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 I like, I like talking to Ice Cube because he gets it, right? And we talked today and it's like, it's like I was saying, like I said, man, there's nothing for the black man out here, nothing. And he, and the crazy thing is he gets that because he's become enormously successful. He's got all this money. He owns things. He thinks like a boss. That's why we relate. And I'm like, even if you only make $20,000 a year, you can still be a boss as a black man, a boss of something. Be the boss of some shit. Be the boss of your own fucking house. Like, be the boss of your life. Be the boss of your vote. Be the boss of, of, of your ideas. Like, like. You can be the boss of something. Being a boss doesn't mean you're worth a hundred million dollars. Being a boss just means that you, you just say, this is my territory and this is how it's going to be in this territory. And, 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 and the thing I think we have in common is that we both learned that from our daddies. We both had strong daddies. And what my dad would kind of do is he was the boss of our house. That's it. Like you were never, ever going to come into our house with some more white supremacy shit and act like you're the boss of that house, you know? And so it wasn't much, but he was the boss of that, right? So I think that black men have to be bosses. I'm a big believer in that. Um, not that every black man's got to have his own business and all that. I mean, I think every black man should be an investor. I do believe that. But you have to be the boss of something because corporate America, white America, white corporate America, white institutionalized, white supremacist infrastructure is not designed to have a place for you. They, it's designed to push you out. They're going to push you out. You know, the only way you get the only way you get invited in is if you're if you're a woman or if you're gay. Those are the only ways you get invited in and they, they make a warm, nice spot for you. B because at that point, if you're a masculine male, you are competition. In the in the wild, animals are designed to eliminate competition. They don't want competition around. There is no like getting along with competition. If you integrate the competition, that pretty much means you've eaten the competition. That means you've killed the competition. You've forced the competition to submit. That's the only way you can integrate the competition in a lot of cases. Right? So I don't, it's not that I'm anti, it's not that I'm, I'm a segregationist, right? I'm not really so much into believing that we have to stay away from other people. It's more so to say I'm a believer in integration under specific terms, meaning that it's one thing if I come to your house and I own a house down the street, right? If I come to your house for dinner and I own my own house down the street, then that's okay. We can hang out, we can watch football, we can be friends, all that stuff. But it's, an, it's totally different if I come to your house and I have no house and I'm trying to move into your basement or I want to stay, you know, in your kid's bedroom or something. I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to look ridiculous. So what I'm saying is that the black man doesn't have to necessarily own everything, but he should own a house. He should own something, some sort of asset, something that's his, where he can say, I'm the boss of this. You might be the boss of all of that, but I'm the boss of this. That's really, really important. So I, I think, so So in general, um, I will say this too, that bosses, when you're a boss, you actually have more weight in the world. Um, a boss has an anchor in a space that's theirs where they can't sort of be pushed around and thrown around. Um, you know, if you own something that gives you pride, like I think for men, the pride is really important. A lot of black men, unfortunately, have low self-esteem because you've been asked to submit to something that isn't yours. And speaking of bosses, speaking of kings, um, it looks like my brother is here. So I'm going to bring you in, man. Um, uh, I just now saw you. I hope you haven't waited for too long. Let me see if I can hit this button to make this work. So give me one second here. Uh, I, and I'll tell you guys in a second why uh, me and his brother agreed to uh, to uh, go online together. Because I, I, I have so much respect for his family. So here we go. Let's see. I'm hitting the button now. Let's see. Okay, I'm hitting the button again. There we go. Go live. King, King Kyren. King Kyren? Oh, I, I don't, let me pull this up. Me... Okay. I think he's coming in now. Hey, brother. What's going on? How you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, so, uh, so I, I said King Kyren. Is that is that correct? Miss Kyren. Kyren, just Kyren. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Well, nice to meet you, man. You too. Yeah, you know. It. Yeah, yeah. You know, is your, now your son? Is your son around? He's sick right now, so I'm letting him. Uh, oh, get, yeah. Get okay. himself together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I'll tell everybody the reason that I'm happy to speak to this brother is because uh, you did a viral video with your son, where you had your son reciting financial concepts that most grown-ups don't even know. Um, and I, I know you know that, and uh, and everybody else, I don't know if you all saw the video, but I was super impressed by that. Um, so 
I guess let's start from the beginning. Um, so that video, how long how long ago was it when you made that particular video? That, uh, that was there on my April. page. Man. I was so impressed. It was uh, that video came out in April. So that was in uh, April. Uh, I've been working on him since you know since he was a kid. You can go look at our videos on the page. I've always uh, made stuff fun, like my pops did with me. You know, I had an active father around me. So uh, we don't play no deadbeats. And I started with him early. Like, you know, my mindset is set them up to be better than you. And, like, my positives, I want him to have my positives, but times 10. And then my negatives, I, don't, I want him to be 10 times stronger than my negatives as well. And, you know, that's the, that's the thing that we a lot of parents don't think about. You know, we just we get comfortable with our kids or, you know, and I'm not comfortable. I'm not letting him be regular. I'm not going to let him have the mindset that regular is normal. No, it's not. That's the problem. They, they want us to be comfortable. They want us to, to be comfortable being still the slave mindset from the Willie Lynch syndrome. And I'd be damned that my son is like that. You know, I was like that. I ain't going to lie to you. You know, I was in the club, VIPs, and had nothing to the show for. I, I had $50,000 and what do I have to show for but some damn shoes? You feel me? So, you know, we got to break this damn, um, this damn nigga syndrome and start teaching these kids to run shit because you can't go to war if you don't have no money. That's right. You know, and a lot of people don't know that, you know, it's all about leaving these kids something. You know, like, you know, my grandfather was in the funeral home and I said, it's every interview I'm going to let people understand. When you, when you, if you, if, when you die and your kids got to scrub up money up to pay for your funeral, you didn't live your life right. You didn't handle your, you didn't handle your money right. That's right. And, you know what I'm saying? And I was the same way. I'm 29. I just got my shit together at 27, you know. So I'm trying to show to everybody, you know, you could be a mess up like me. You know, I was I was a screw up. You know, look at me. And then I'm now look at me bouncing around. Now I'm sitting here about to have books out and stuff with my son. Like, you could have told me that shit. <laughs> you could have told me that. So, <laughs> you know. Man, so, so let me ask you this. Uh, how many kids you got? I got one. Really? Okay. And, and tell me your son's name. Uh, my name's Kyron. His is King. So he's uh, eight. Okay, he's eight. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, no. What, what city y'all from? Uh, I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. But you know, uh, live in Charlotte. Uh, my son, though, you know, I'm, I've been in Raleigh during the COVID with him and his mom. So, yo. Now, how old was your son when he when he did that video? Uh, he was seven. His birthday is April, so he did the video right like about two weeks before the uh before his birthday. Man. You had and everybody. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm find a video and share it again because, um, and I and I'll tag you on it, brother, so you can come in and comment. You know, um, I was blown away, man, because it was like, like you really drilled him like a soldier. You know, mm -hmm. like I always, I always talk about how we need economic soldiers. Like, like I think that's a solution for our community, and and I and I saw that video and I was inspired because I said that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, like you, like you went down the list. The very thing. So what, let, let me, let's talk about that process. So first of all, you know, what, how did you, what, what age did you begin teaching them these concepts? Honestly, I went, I went, like, I told myself once he turns eight, that's when I'm going to get serious on him. And, you know, uh, COVID hit, <clears throat> and, you know, we stuck in the house. So I was like, hell, ain't nothing else to do. I'm not going to let you sit on these damn video games all day every day i'm not doing it that's what i used to do and it made me lazy and it, it made my work ethic shit that's why now like i gave my own game system to my little brother because i'm like i know right now as a grown-ass man i'm gonna sit here and play the game all day so <laughs> I, I you know now i know things that i know it takes my weight my my attention away from progressing i gotta let it go so um i started with him right when kobe hit like really hard to understand these definitions like real hard and um People, you know, I got so many, you know, you got so many people like, but we was on Steve Harvey and, you know, we was talking about it. Um, You know, like I told Steve, you know, we got a lot of haters. You're going to have a lot of haters. Oh, he just, he is a script. Well, this is what people don't understand. It's how dumb people make themselves sound just to hate on a kid. It's understanding something they don't understand. So, wait, haters? You, you had haters for this? Like, what what, what were they? I guess everybody going to have haters. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, um, what, what's, what's there to hate on? Like, you had your son drilled on economics. Like, what, what, what were people saying? Uh, you know, we especially mainly, and I ain't gonna lie, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care for nobody, mainly whites, but you know, I've, I've had our own people hating. Uh, he, it's just a script. School books are scripts. <laughs> uh, you, you're you taught to recite school books. So I'm, I'm just lost in the ignorance I hear people say. You're planting a seed for them to understand these words when they hear it. So say he does forget these. Say something happened to me, I'm not here no more on this earth to, to keep, you know, to, to lead him away because something happens to me. That's life. 
he hear these one words, ooh, my daddy taught me that when I was seven, eight. Ooh, okay, I remember this, I remember that. That's what you're doing. You're planting a seed. It's it's just like spelling ABCs. I'm repeating it over and over again. I give him a adult term, the term we all know the words, and then I give him kid terms. Like I always say, like collateral. I taught my son with collateral. Uh, it's like going to skate ring. If I get my shoes, I get my shoes to you to get the skates. If I don't bring the skates back, I don't get my shoes back. It's like going to the YMCA. If you want a basketball, you got to give us your ID or your keys. If you don't give us that, you don't get the basketball. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand it's so simple. We make it way harder than mm. it is. And what made me really step my game up, my best friend, he he's a banker. My, a couple of my dogs are bankers. And, you know, one time I was around them just listening to them talk. And I didn't understand nothing they were saying. And I felt that's the first time I felt like an idiot. You feel me? So I said, nah, I'm about to get on my shit. So I started Googling and teaching myself. And it's still stuff that it's a hundred things I don't know now, but I'm, I'm while I learn them, I teach my son. You man. know, that's how you do it. I, I love that, man. So so I'm trying to remember, did you, I, I, I don't remember exactly how we started talking on um, Instagram. I know I saw, I saw, I went in and I didn't know on Instagram that they had that those messages that you can't see because uh, you're not following the person yet. And I didn't even know all those messages were there. So I went in and I saw, I saw a lot of messages from people I didn't even know, like I, like from a year ago. You know, I mean, like, and random stuff, man. Like, like Deion Sanders, like, I'm like, I don't even know Deion Sanders, you know. But it's like these people that hit me up, and so I'm going through the messages, and then I saw your message, man, and it was it was an older message, but I I, I remember I don't know how I connected you with that video. Maybe I clicked on it and I saw the video, and I remembered it, man. And I I just remember being just um. Uh, not just impressed, but but I said, okay, this is exactly the blueprint. Like, if we had a million fathers or mothers or both doing what you, half of what you and your son were able to do, like there will be no stopping black people, no no stopping yeah. us on the economic front at all. And um, and so the other question I want to ask you was, did you mention that your, your son, that you or your son, had done some stuff with the black business school before, or am I making that up in my head? No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> I, everything's been self-taught you know um honestly everything's been self-taught and i'm big on him knowing his history period you know I, he knows everything he knows about emmett till uh he knows about uh any black leader you think he possibly could think of he knew that at seven you know he loves history he loves malcolm x um he knows everything you know i taught him just i just taught him about uh wilmington you know, Wilmington, the same thing that happened in uh, Oklahoma, Tulsa, the same thing happened in Wilmington, North Carolina here. You know, they hide it up and they sweep that on the rug. So King knows everything. He, I let him watch the George Floyd situation, and he it pissed him off. I'm not going to sugarcoat with my son. He needs to know this. You know, you're a black man. It's going to be 10 times harder. This is not a game. They don't care about you. So you know, I, this is not a, this is not going to be no cakewalk, son. So you need to get the work ethic now because I didn't have it. I was smart as hell, but I was sitting here dumb, and all I cared about was – I'm going to play football, I'm going to rap. So now I'm teaching my son have the mind all the way through. And if you do want to rap, still know how to protect yourself and save yourself and make sure you can take care of yourself in other areas if you do want to rap. If you want to be an athlete, that's cool. I love it. That's what I want to do. That was my dream. But if you want to be an athlete, be a smart athlete, know how to invest, know how to make sure everything's straight and make sure nobody plays you, all that. So that's why I'm teaching him just basically not to get finessed or played by nobody, not his own people, not the other people period. In no way, shape, or form. I just want him to be 10 times greater than I can ever be. And at the same time, I'm doing this. I want to teach uh, these other kids that's watching, these other parents. I didn't know this five years, three, four, five years ago. So don't sit here and think, because life is growth. We all got this mindset. I'm too old. Man, ain't no damn age is not just nothing but a number. Mm -hmm. you know, age well, is nothing but a number. Well, you know, and the thing is, man, you know, it's, um, you know, you, you're 29, and I'm I'm, I'm definitely a lot, a lot of years older than you, man. And it's like, when I was 29, I felt like I was old, but I really wasn't old. But mm -hmm. it's like you have to be as old as I am to know how young you are, right? So uh, as much as you might feel like, like, oh, man, I, I, I waited this long, uh, you know, in, in a lot of spaces, it's easy to say that you actually get started early. You know what I mean? Like the fact that you elevated your game and you stepped up to the challenge. I mean, that first of all, that's what manhood is all about. It's about mm -hmm. not running away from your challenges. There, everybody has limitations. Everybody has, you know, fears. Everybody has shortcomings. Everybody mm -hmm. makes mistakes. And <laughs> what, I, what I learned a long time ago from my father is that manhood doesn't mean that you don't have those vulnerabilities. It's how you respond to that shit. 
Like, how do you how do you react? You know, like, I mean, do you let it, do you shrivel up and fold and walk away and run and break down? Or do you just say, all right, I'm going to face up to it? You know, and it could be something as basic as like, you know, like even like, like people make fun of me now because I, I had to do a lot of dental work, you know, because uh, I, I just didn't take care of my teeth and all that. And, and my woman kept getting on me about it. And I was like, all right, well, let me be a man. Let me just go in here and do this. And, th and it took 14 hours, man. Four they had to put me on there and everything, doing surgery, pulling stuff out, drilling in there. And, um, and it's like it was my manhood that, that led me to understand, like, certain values. Like, there's a code of, of thought that you have as a man where you say, I don't give a fuck what happens to me. I don't care what you bring up to me. I'm going to man up to that, you know, and as a, just as a core principle. And I think that one of the things I like what, about what you're doing with your son is you're teaching your son that manhood really is a decision. You know what I mean? Like, like just, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? Because we can always do better. We can always do more. We can always do our best and win or lose. Like, the question is, could you have done more? Is there more you could do? And the decision to do more is like, you know, one of those things where even when I've lost, um, I learned how to understand what it means to win or lose, what it means to really lose. Like, so when I think about, you know, hard choices I make, a loss to me is more so like if I just bowed down, walked away, gave up, you know. But if I fought until the death, like, you know what I mean, until my last yeah. breath and gave everything I had, I walk away feeling like a winner because I know that even if I didn't win that one time, I'm going to win eventually. Yeah. It's, it's, it might be a process. I might have to lose two more times before I get that first win. But it's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or 100 L's before you get that, that one big win. It might take you 10 years. Like, that's how I feel about me. It took me to 29 to really, now we're here. I, you know, I didn't think that this attention would have came with it. But, you know, uh, I kinda, I like it in the fact that where it makes my son sit here. I, he has to know. It makes me know the pressure is on. You can't stop now. So, we're go. going. And, you know, uh, I, you know, I'm the oldest of five siblings. You know, my youngest sibling is eighth grade. You know, I got – Four of them, three of them, high school, one eighth grade. Then my son King, and I ain't had no big brother, so uh, my mindset. I love that everybody's getting to watch this. So these kids that don't don't have no father, no big brother, got somebody to look up to. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. I'm not this and that and third, but watch me, follow me. I will lead you. You know what I'm saying? You know everybody else want to lead it in the stupid ass ways. I will lead you, follow. Me. You know, watch what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And 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 outdo me. Outdo my son with your kids. You feel me? So that's what it's all about. Yeah, I like that, man. So, um, you, so you're the oldest of how many, how many brothers and sisters you got? I got one sister and I got four brothers. And my sister, oh, wow. she's, a, she's a freshman in college at North Carolina A&T. And then three of my brothers in high school with them. Yeah, my youngest in eighth grade. So, Well, that, well that's, a, that's a great opportunity, man, when you're the oldest. Like, I'm the, I'm the oldest, too. And what I found is that when you're the oldest and you leave with your, your actions and your choices and your behavior, uh, the other kids follow you. They pay attention to what you're doing, you know. So I think that your your brothers are lucky, man, to have somebody to look up to, um, you know. Because I, I had um I had like an older brother type of figure. He was my uncle, uh, but he he was he, you know to be honest with you, he's kind of a weak man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like I think I started when I was probably your son's age. That's when I started noticing, like, man, he's kind of a, <laughs> kind of a punk. Like, he's kind of, <laughs> so like I, you know, I I, lo I loved him. You know, I loved him more than any person on the planet. But, you know, like, when he would go to jail and all that, man, I remember just, you know, it's like, it would break my heart and all that. And he died young. He died, um, well, younger than he should have died. And, yeah. and so going through that experience, like, on the other side of that, um, first of all, it made me sensitive to the fact that, one, um, you know, when they, for example, when they were locking up so many black men, they were locking up people's fathers and older brother figures and stuff like that. And that's why, you know, like, guys that think like yourself at 29 are not as common as they should be. You know, what I mean, it doesn't mean that there's nobody else out there, but they don't know who they are. They don't know what to what behavior to model because you need the role models. And then the other thing it taught me, man, was, um, you know, watching him taught me the importance of like that sturdiness you have to have yeah. as as a father, old, older brother, as a mentor. Like when you're like the OG and somebody's looking at you, there's a certain degree of um of, of, of confidence you have to find and muster that up to just say, okay, follow me. And, and, it's, and it's not easy. Like, you know, there's a lot of doubts that can come up, you know. And and what you learn, I think, is you learn how to just say, well, I'm going to figure it out. Or I just, I'll just work through, you know, my doubts. Or I'll go get the information I need. But, you know, but that's a choice, right? 
And if you don't know that, like if you've never been taught how to man up properly, you'll get like you'll fold to that. Like you'll start getting insecure and lazy and scared and you won't follow through. But so I, I that's what I like, man. I like I like what you do with the, with your son, man. So let me ask you this. So uh your son, did he has he expressed like what he wants to be when he grows up? He still don't know yet. Um uh, I mean he he wants to do sports and stuff. And I told him that's fine. You know, as long as you know them grades is number one, that's all that matter. And you know also what we also need to learn, which I, some people you can't say this to. I really, you know, I'm big on psychology, just naturally. Some people you can't say and say grades ain't everything and college ain't everything because they'll sit here and just say hell with that, especially young kids. Some young kids, you can't tell them that. They'll say hell with school then, right? He just said, I don't need that. You know, they use that as an excuse to be lazy. But, uh, you know, you know, schools, you know, the system don't want us to know about learning about trading. <laughs> they don't want us to, they, they took home economic out on purpose so we don't learn. Like, we need to bring that shit back, learn, teach these kids how to pay bills, teach them how to write checks, withdrawals, deposits, and, you know, all that. But they don't want us to know that. They want us to keep failing. They don't want us to understand our financial literacy. You know, like, I see some comments in here. There's a lot, a lot of people saying, you know, uh, what about the history of the black man? We all know that. That's automatic. Come on. You know, I don't trade this shit <laughs> never to be this skin color. I don't care all the stress in the world. I don't trade it <laughs> for nothing. You know, I'm black and I'm proud, period. But we need to understand that this the part where we are just the lowest and always been the lowest and they slowly made us the lowest is the financial part. We don't we don't own nothing. Out of six like I always say this, out of six hundred, I think fifteen uh billionaires in America, it's only mm. what six it's only six of us. Yeah. Yeah. Only only six. And what what kind of war would that be? <laughs> that's damn that's that's six hundred and what? That's what? That's six hundred plus damn the 600 circled around damn six. <laughs> 600 plus circle around six. What the hell is that? That's that's a fast wolf. So Ooh. we have to realize that we all have to slowly start learning. And, and you know, I see so many people like myself. And I can't lie. I, when I talk shit about others, I talk about myself. Uh, a lot, you know, my favorite person in the world, Malcolm X. Second favorite person in the world, Tupac. And, you know, I had to call myself out being a hypocrite. How can I sit here and look up to Malcolm X? And how can I look up to Tupac? on his Black Panther side. And I'm not sitting here trying to uh, leave that type of message and positivity on others, you know, every day while I'm still being negative, but I'm screaming, I love Nipsey and all of this. So if you gonna scream, you love Malcolm and that, live that, be that, you know, at least express that and give that type of energy amongst the people around you. So that's when I said, you know what, King, you gotta learn this. You gotta be that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say and be a sheep. <laughs> Either you're gonna be a sheep or a shepherd. You gotta be a leader. There so, you go. You know, there you go, man. Well, well I, I love that, man. I, I think when you talk about leadership, uh, you know, um, the the man uh, a man has to uh, start first of all by leading himself. Like you gotta know how to lead yourself. Look in the mirror. You gotta look in the mirror first. The sheep versus shepherd, right? So, and then the other thing, and it's important for a black man because everybody wants to mind control you. Everybody's got a plan for you. If you don't have a plan for yourself, somebody else got a, got a plan for you. But then also it's like, when I, what I learned was like, when you fight battles as a man, the first battle I had to fight was with me. And in fact, that was the first battle, the most important battle. <laughs> Once I won that battle uh, within myself, meaning, you know, the battle for confidence, like, okay, I can do this. I'm not, let, you're not going to talk me out of it. You're not going to scare me. Um, I, I, I have the things I say I'm going to do and the things I actually do. I had to bring that together. If I say it, I'm going to fucking do it. You know what I mean? And that, that's, that's huge for, for any man because you get a lot of guys out here that never learn manhood and they, they'll promise stuff. Like, oh, I'll pick you up from school at 5 o'clock and they don't show up. Oh, well, something came up or I forgot I went to sleep. No, you don't do that. You know what I mean? Like your actions and your words have to connect. So, and, that, and what people understand is that from like a spiritual standpoint, that's manifesting. That's what manifesting means. Manifesting means I, I see it up here, and then I make it reality. I make it into a three-dimensional real-life thing that you can actually feel, feel and touch. And the power of that comes in, that, that's what, and then at that point, you can take that manifestability, and you can make a plan. Okay, my plan is I'm going to start a business. My plan is after that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. this. You say so you have a list. Okay, your, this is your path to becoming a millionaire. Well, if you have the power to manifest where well, you can take it from here and make it real, then you're going to follow through on all of this, right? And next yep. thing you know, like, all of that becomes real. So I found that that's the biggest battle ever, right? When I got to the point where most of the time, if not all the time, that I do what I say I'm going to do, like, I keep the promises, first of all, to myself, right, and not come up short on that shit, that puts you in the top 1% right there. 
Because most people, how often you see people, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, and they don't lose shit. You know what I, I mean? Hate, like, I oh, I'm going to read this book. They never get around to it, right? So, so once, once you, and once you win that battle, I feel like you can go win any battle. Then at that point, you can start going out and conquering and getting territory. You know what I mean? Like, you can go out and, and you go head to head with somebody who doesn't have that same manifestability that you have, that doesn't have that same discipline you have. You're going to win every time. You know what I mean? Like, like, like when they give up, you're going to show up, you know? So I, I think that with your son, what I like about it, man, is that it's like you have given him uh, tools that are not just going to impact his life. It's going to impact his children, his children's children, and his, um, his grandchildren uh, and beyond. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it's literally a generational habit that, like, your son's going to be a millionaire. Because uh, I'm sure I don't even have to ask you, but I have no doubt that you probably y'all you probably own stock and all that, right? Y'all get y'all invested in stock. He's about to start learning. He's actually about to start learning. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and by the way, if you if you want, I have a little free video, you can check it out if you want to. It's at firstsharestock.com. So feel free to go take a look at that. But but like so, you you invest stock for him consistently, right? Like a small amount every week, whatever the budget you know will will, will maintain. Um, but, uh, you know, like I always tell you, like the way we tie the church, we tie 10% of our income to the past. I guess if you go to church, well, tie 10% of your income to your future or to your son's future, right? At least 10%, right? So you got that money going into stocks. So then when your son gets to be in his twenties, he's got like money to work with, right? So he's got all this stuff up here, all this skill that you've taught him. So he's learned how to use the weapons and then he has the weapons to use, right? So he can take that money and because he knows what moves to make, he will then be able to grow that money. He'll be able to make that money work for him. He'll be able to create all these streams of income. So I, I think your son's going to be a millionaire by the age of 35. You know what I mean? Maybe even 30, you know, or if he gets into technology, it might be 20 or 25. So I think you set him up, man. And, uh, and, 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 and the thing about having money is it ain't just about the money part. It's like the freedom. Then he has, uh oh, did he disappear? Oh, it looks like we got disconnected. I think he's going to come back in. But you guys get what I'm saying? That if you give your child uh, resources and then you give them skill on what to do with the resources, then that teaches them how to grow the resources, right? So ultimately, here he is. Okay, he came back. So we'll give him a second to come in. Still teach him his grandparents' history, for sure. If the pastors are crooked, better to invest your 10%. Absolutely. Um... All right. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, it was messing up. That's why I had to. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say that, you know, like the way you had your son, like, know these these uh, concepts at an early age, all you got to do at that point is consistently put money in the stock in the stock market for him. Um, I wouldn't even tell him that the money's there. You know what I mean? Like, like it's to me, in my opinion, like you're the head of the household. It's your money until you feel like he's ready to have some of it, right? Like, I, I don't I, – I, like with my kids, I don't even – they, they have no idea how much I have for them, but I know it's there in case they need it, right? And then yeah. if it happens to me, it's going to be passed down through a, um, a state plan and all that. But just in case they decide to go crazy and do something stupid or get hooked on drugs, or which they wouldn't do, but if they did, they wouldn't get yeah. to do that, right? You know, so, so I would invest consistently for them. That way he's got, like, some money to work with. So when he gets about 11 or 12 years old, he's like, <laughs> hey, Dad, I want to start a business like you, like you taught me, right? You can pull 5000 out and be like, okay, here's your capital. You know, go make it work. You know what I mean? Or he gets to college and he says, you know, in college, he wants to have a business in college. Or he wants to maybe not go to college. Maybe he wants to go and learn a different skill that's going to help him start a company or whatever. Like, he's got capital. Yeah. And so you do those two things, man. Your son, And then he's already got the discipline because he's got a great father. Uh, you're teaching him great things. And, um, and I, th I think he's going to be extraordinary, man. I, 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 I congratulate you on that. I appreciate it. You know, de definitely. And I'm, um, I'm going to go look at that. Uh, once we get up here, i have you send me the video or whatnot, and I'll go look at that because, uh, you know, I know about stocks and bonds, but I still don't exactly know the whole entirety. So I need to learn all of it. So I'm big on, you know, once somebody tell me something that sounds good, um, I will research the hell out of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, let me just tell you, this, man. you know, the stock, I'm, I'm typing in the URL for anybody that wants to, to take a look, too, and I'll pin it. Um, the thing about it is, like, the stock market, like, that's, um, that's what my PhD's in. And the thing about it is that it's not as complicated as, as, as you think, right? You, like, there's a lot you can learn, right? But there's also, like, real basic shit where you can get started, like, 
today. Yeah. You know what I mean, like you can get on your cash app, start buying stock right now. All you got to do is uh, be a long-term investor, not short-term, right? So you buy stock, try to hold it for a while. Uh, and then two, don't buy like just one or two. Spread your money out. You see what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, like, makes sense. like if you follow those two rules, you will have far more money than people who don't invest. Guaranteed. Like that's proven over the last 120 years. Uh, in fact, they actually uh, did the test. They tested with monkeys. They <laughs> monkeys invest. And all, they, all the monkeys did was they held their stock and they didn't buy the same stock. And the monkeys were just picking the stocks by throwing darts at the wall. Like the monkeys can't really read, right? So they would throw the dart at the wall and they would pick the stock that the, the dart landed on. So it was literally random stocks. And, and all they did was they put them in a, like a portfolio or a basket of stocks and they just let it sit there. And they said, how much money did the monkeys make? Well, the monkeys actually made more money than a person who doesn't invest. It's not like if you, it's not like you're going to do wrong and, and pick the wrong ones or whatever. Like that's why you spread your money out because when one goes up, one goes down. But what you're doing is you're connecting your wealth to the wealth of the economy. So when America's getting richer, you're getting richer. You see what I mean? Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'll say to get started, man. Like, just jump in and learn while you are um, learn while just learn while you're doing it. And, and I guarantee it, it, that that's the, the one thing. Because one problem is a lot of kids. A lot of kids might learn stuff, but they don't have any assets, right? So then they gotta go work for a white man or whatever to get by. And I, I don't think your son is cut out to. He's not cut out to be a slave. He's not gonna be a good slave. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 So anyway, man, uh, I, I'll let you uh, get the last word, man, before I let you get on out of here, bro. So, uh, so what, what, what's your what's your plans for your son in general and in, in, in the future? <laughs> Anything else? Um, his favorite word <laughs> definition. He always said people want to be a tycoon. So you know, I basically taught him, you know, just you know, be a businessman. The money you use, keep it invested, just like what you just said with the stocks. Keep different hustles going the same way so i was there i understand everything you're saying with the stocks keep different hustles going and you know generate jobs for your for your family and your people you know so everybody's straight you know what i'm saying so yeah definitely that's what we all about and that's what i'm about too and i'm just trying to get you know create since since i didn't have no generational wealth left to me i'm trying to create it for him so i'm trying to give him his first million well how i gotta do it i'm gonna do it so uh, he, he's gonna he's gonna get there um the way your son is gonna become a millionaire is gonna happen either either he's going to uh um, either over time if you invest consistently for him um and you and you're, and you're aggressive about it like buying stock for him every week like just set it on autopilot where it automatically just goes in your account um that's gonna build up his first like hundred thousand two hundred thousand then what what's gonna happen is um the the one thing he's going to do is going to be a real game changer is he's going to own property before anybody else because you've given him that core value. Like, that's the value. Like, he's not going to – like, if he's paying rent for more than a couple of years, he's going to feel like this ain't the way it's supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be paying rent because – He knows that already. Yeah, like you told him in the video, don't be a sucker with your money. Well, suckers are paying rent to a landlord, right? So he's going to be like, my daddy always told me not to be a sucker. So he's not going to pay rent very long. He's going to buy a house. And then he may even try to buy more property because he may see he understands that property is a way to actually earn income. The third thing that you, the, the third way your son might become a millionaire is because you've also planted the seed in him for independence. Again, these are values. This is not just like the X's and O's of, of finance. This is a core value. Like I want to be a free black man. I don't want to be a sucker with my money. I want to uh, plant seeds for the future. Like that's a value system that has nothing to do with money. Right? So, then what's going to happen is he's probably going to start a business early. I'm thinking like 11 or 12 years old because he knows how to really make money. You know, he knows how to make money like, like, like the way owners make money. He's not going to want to be a fucking employee. <laughs> like, like, nah. you know, that's not going to gel with his spirit because, again, he's going to feel like a sucker. Like, wait a minute. I'm making, you know, $30 an hour, but my boss is making $400 an hour. I should be the boss because no. you, you already <laughs> – uh, bless him with a self-perception. You said his name is King, right? Yep, King. Well, there you go. You've already um, you've already uh, planted a seed in his subconscious where he cannot see himself as anything less than the king. You see what I mean? So, yep. so again, core values had nothing to do with money. So he's going to start a business probably at an early age, uh, and, and then if he hits on something that he really likes and he's really good at, he may start something even in his teenage years 
that can literally make him his first million. I have seen this happen. I've seen this happen. The key idea, the problem for a lot of black people is we don't open that up for our kids. We don't even open them up to those possibilities. We start talking to them about getting a job, and they never learn all this other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. if you open that up for him, man, yourself yeah. looks some great stuff, man. Just like you said, two like two things circling back to what you just said. Um, for everybody that's in here that don't understand, uh, when you paying rent, you paying somebody, you you paying off somebody else's mortgage. <laughs> I just hope everybody understands it. So, you know, a lot of people don't even get that. They don't even think about that. that damn, I'm really sitting here paying somebody else's mortgage. Your 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 mortgage is cheaper than the rent. You know, and I'm about to actually do a video on home, I'm about to do a video on home ownership with my son. So, <laughs> we, man, we let me tell you, bro. I, you know, I own some property, right? And uh, the, one of the first pieces of property I bought, the rent, I just, I didn't even know what the rent was supposed to be. I just asked the property manager. She said the rent's going to be 1700 because that's what you charge in this building. The mortgage is $1,100. So the person that pays the rent pays the mortgage. And also on top of that, the value of the bill of, of, the, of the condo is going up every year. Mm -hmm. Like, like this, you know, everybody listen, like, that's how, that's why rich people seem to just have money falling out of the sky. You got to position yourself the right way. And unfortunately, man, so many people get distracted with all this other stuff that they don't understand, you know, how to actually put themselves in a good position. So um, I'm going to quit talking about it because I could talk about this all day, man. Yeah. I just, and I would just say, I, I want everybody, uh, are people able to follow you like just off of this? conversation like are they able to click on something and see like how to follow you yeah I'm they should be able to they should be able to uh, go to my name i mean you know it's k-y-n-g underscore karen k-y-r-e-n and okay. you know we get actually get we actually uh just completed four of our workbooks we got four uh workbooks they're gonna come out over time um you know entrepreneurship workbook for the kids and the family you know crossword puzzles all that stuff coloring to make the kids fun for the kids and the adults too um entrepreneurship uh, we're teaching uh, business entrepreneurship. We're teaching um, everything I talk about the banks, you know, everything. So we're learning all that stuff, making it fun for everybody. Then me and Marshall Falk have a curriculum coming out. It's like a college curriculum, basically, so middle school and up, if you want to get the curriculum, we, which we're about to drop. And, you know, we go, it's nine nine chapters, and we break down each thing you need to understand about financial literacy, you know, for everybody. So, you know, we're just trying to change the game. And uh, definitely. Definitely. There you go. Game, definitely. You know, some we we I see so many so many of us argue on here about, you know, like the election and all this and that, but like Malcolm said, if you ain't got a solution, hmm. all that energy you're, ex you're exerting without coming up with a solution, then it's it's pointless. So now y'all let's come up with these solutions. And number one solution, what we're talking about right now, financial literacy. <laughs> Period. Period. Oh, that's right. That's right. So everybody following, you should definitely go follow this brother. And uh, you'll be real impressed with him and his son and what he's doing with his family. And so if you want, you know, like all the education you need is right here on social media. And, you know, I think the fact that, you know, all you all that are in here right there tells me that you you're part of the army. Like you're the future millionaires of tomorrow and we can show you everything you need to know. Um, and uh, and so follow follow this brother and his family. Uh, because uh, they got, they get, they have the formula. Uh, the reason that I was real happy, I've never done. Just so you know, I don't even remember. I don't think I remember. I, it's maybe been a year since I interviewed anybody on Instagram. But I was very happy to do this interview with you, man. Because when I saw what you were doing with your son, I said that's exactly what we need. Like we need, like if we had a million families doing what you were doing, we could not. Black people could not be fucking with. Like we literally would become more powerful than the Jews and everybody else in terms of money and wealth and all that. Because as you said, when you were telling your son, you don't want to be a sucker with your money. Well, it's like, that's what it is because business is a game and you're going up against somebody. And if you're not prepared, then you will, <laughs> suffer. You will get exploited. And so instead of us complaining and, and being sad because we get exploited a lot, maybe we should prepare ourselves to defend ourselves against exploitation. So that's what it means when he says, don't be a sucker, right? Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody mess you up, you know? Yeah. So that's what's up, man. Yeah. Uh, get the last word, brother. Please, uh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and I see everybody um, saying, like I said, it's King Karen. Um, the program, I will be promoting on my page when the workbooks drop. They're going to be dropping next month. The curriculum is going to be dropping next month. 
And I want y'all to understand, this is not no sellout curriculum either. <laughs> this is us being us. We're giving our definitions in the curriculum <laughs> of, like, just like Jordans. If you buy some Jordans and you want to flip them, like, we we keeping a, a, us. All, it's for us, by us. <laughs> so I'm just letting y'all know that. And, um, yeah, definitely. You know, me and you will link up after this. But everybody, you know, just follow. And whatever you see us do, hell, copy us. <laughs> Teach your kids to do it. Outdo us. You know, it should be competition with your kids. Are you teaching your kids competition? Because we 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 gotta stop it somewhere. Like we've been like it's been PE. Like I ain't gonna lie to you, uh, doc. <laughs> I watched your videos and said, "Hell, King, we about to step this shit up." And then we did our thing. So you know, anybody, it's not about attention. I don't care about no damn thing. I'm trying to leave a, a print to where my life was left a stamp on other people's lives. You know what I'm saying? I um, I basically was living with no purpose. You know, I was chasing women all damn day. I have no, like, like I taught my little brothers, you know, you don't get no trophy for how many women you slept with. You don't get no damn, uh, you don't get a pat. I mean, you get little cool pats on the back. What the hell is that, man? That's nothing. You know, you might have a daughter one day. You know what I'm saying? You got to lead. How a woman going to follow you and, and listen to what you're saying? You can't even lead yourself. You can't even clean up yourself. Cleanliness is next to godliness. You can't even handle yourself spiritually. Like what you just said is a spiritual communication with yourself to learn to say to yourself, like, okay, I'm not living my life right. <laughs> I'm not doing what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Man, get my shit together. So right now, I finally got my shit together, 29, and I'm going to make sure you get his shit together. And if you follow us, we're going to make sure you get your shit together. There you so, go. So, so everybody, did, did y'all catch that? Let's get our shit together. We can do this. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we can. Collection. Because that's why they kill us. That's why they kill us. Think about it. Mm. You're not going to kill a white man. Police ain't going to say be the killer white man, that might be the judge's son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about it. They might be the man that that that, that owns all the land in town. Blacks mm -hmm. say like, oh, he don't own shit. We we kill your ass. You don't know, you don't know Puffy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't know Jay Z. And you ain't nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So once we get this power, where well, they can't, they scared to do that shit. I don't know who this might be. Mm -hmm. Blacks own everything over there. That's why they damn. That's why they was bombing. White people started looting first. <laughs> they did that when we were wasn't even bothering. Them. We had our own money. We had our own stuff. Back when segregation was going on, that's when we actually was our best when it came to money. Mm -hmm. That's why they would burn our asses down, tear all the communities up because they didn't want us to damn leave. And hey, man, but hell no, these blacks they they getting a little too damn, a little too damn, uh, a little too uppity. No, keep them down here. And now we at war with each other. They brought mm -hmm. the drugs here on purpose to keep us at war with each other. We don't even see it, man. We don't even realize it. We love. We walk past each other, mad as hell. It's all been a steal. We got to stop this shit. And I was just like, I was the same nigga doing it too. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? I still, I still, I'm still at war today with trying to tell myself, calm down. You're not in the streets no more. You can't be doing that. You got to leave these people. You feel me? So we got to start with ourselves first. So everybody look in the mirror. Don't talk about what the hell they doing over there. Talk about what the hell you doing. How can you change this whole shit going on? There That's all I got. So. There you go. I, I, I love that, man. I agree with you 100%. It's about what you do, not what they do. Stop reacting to what they do. Make them react to what you did. And that, that that's what it is. That's what leadership's all about. Sheep versus shepherd, like you said earlier. And I agree with you, man. So everybody, uh, make sure you support the brother. Um, and I'll tell you, man, I, I, I really enjoy getting a chance to talk to you. And then uh, one, one day we got to talk again. You bring your son in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do wow, everybody. You know, because uh, I, I, y'all got to see that video. I'm, I'm going to find the video. I'm going to post it on my Instagram, everybody, so you can take a look at it. It was, uh, if you want to know how to raise a child to be economically intelligent, you want to do what was being done in that video. Uh, that's how black children are going to be uh, world leaders in economics. Like that, that's, that's our master plan for world domination. We're not here to compete or, or excuse me, or to catch up or to uh, tie with anybody or to be included or all this other stuff. We try to win. You know, like that's yeah. what you want to do. We, we should win. We're the original man. We're the original woman. Uh, we are the original people. We can't be stopped when we put our mind to it. So put your mind to it. Let's do this. Well, nice to meet you, brother. I look forward to talking to you again. Maybe when I come down to Charlotte or something, uh, we can meet up, man, and, and uh, talk in person. Yeah, let me know. Definitely, I'll be. I'm always in. You know, I'm always here in Atlanta. So it's you know. Oh, you you like you said Atlanta? Yeah, I'm always in Atlanta. That's my um my managers in Atlanta. My um Tala AC in Atlanta. So I'm always in Atlanta. My family from Atlanta. I used to live in Atlanta. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well, you know, I think I'm actually be in Atlanta next week, maybe. So I'll hit you up. Maybe let, let me know because I'll I'll meet you. I bring King because we gotta do some videos and out there anyway. So yeah, let me know. Okay, bro. All right. Well, nice to meet you, man. All right, everybody, follow this brother. Uh, show show uh, respect. Give him a digital thank you, and uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. Have a good day, yeah. man. All right. Peace.
Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three, what did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are.